Hello and welcome to Strategic News Global. I am Surya Gangadharan. The assassination of the Iranian Quds Force General uh, Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad airport in broad daylight has uh, brought the region to the brink of uncertainty and possibly even war. I have with me Mr. Talmiz Ahmed, who was former India's ambassador to uh, Saudi Arabia, to Oman, uh, and to the UAE. So, what do you make of this? And uh, is General Soleimani was he so important? Yes, he was extremely important. Uh, as far as Iraqi and regional affairs are concerned, he was a principal role player in managing and manipulating the politics of the region. Uh, he has been a crucial role player behind the scenes in the fight against uh, the Islamic State and also in supporting Bashar Assad against the various enemies he has within the country. He was also a master manipulator of the Iraqi political scenario mm. and ensured that at least over three elections, Iran's uh, nominees became prime minister. So yes, he has been a very significant player. He controlled in Iraq the various pro-Iran militia mm -hmm. who are the source of Iran's influence and power in the country. He also was very close to all the prominent politicians mm. and therefore was able to bring them together in order to ensure that Iran's interests were sustained in that country. So yes, I think this is a body blow as far as Iran's interests are concerned. Mm -hmm. I understand he also worked with the Americans at some point? He worked with the Americans quite frequently <laughs> whenever their interests were on the same side. In 2001, after the 9-11 attacks, Iran provided a lot of very valuable intelligence to the Americans in their fight against the Taliban. Later in 2007, when the country was overrun by jihadi violence in, in Baghdad and in the rest of Iraq, he worked, you know, his officials worked with the Americans to bring the situation under control. Uh, so yes, there has been, and then of course they worked together in the war against Mosul, uh, against the Islamic State at Mosul, where he controlled the popular mobilization units, mm -hmm. the pro-Iran militia. So yes, there has been a certain tactical cooperation on both sides when it suited them, but they fell out, obviously. They had serious competitions and differences as far as Syria as, and also Iraq are concerned. So, what did General uh, Soleimani do that tilted the balance and forced the Americans to target him? It is difficult to explain because the events are very close to us. I think it has a lot to do with the situation at home in the United States. Donald Trump has consistently maintained that he does not wish to involve American forces in a, in a Middle East conflict, mm -hmm. in a West Asian conflict. He's very clear about that and has frequently said that he would indeed like to withdraw U.S. forces. He wanted to withdraw U.S. forces from Syria and from Iraq and from, the re and from Afghanistan. So from the region as a whole, his instincts are to withdraw American forces. But as he himself has said, he cannot justify to the mothers and wives and daughters of American servicemen why their boy was killed in West Asia. He has been a severe critic of Obama, President Obama in this regard. So he, his instincts have remained the same. Mm. But the force of circumstances has been to ensure that he is maintained there. I think there is a role played here by some of the hawks in his cabinet. They press the right buttons with him. Now in this particular case, uh, I think what tilted the balance was the blockade of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. The crossing of the Green Line into the Green Zone, which is a heavily fortified area. It was clearly done with the full knowledge and connivance of the Iraqi government. Mm -hmm. And you had thousands upon thousands of these zealots parked outside the U.S. Embassy. Some of them entered the outbuildings as well. The concern in Washington would have been, I imagine, a possible attack on the embassy and the killing of some of their personnel, or worse still, an occupation of the embassy for several years, as had happened in Tehran in 1979. If either of these events had taken place, it would have been impossible for Donald Trump to be re-elected. Mm. 
I do recall here that yesterday or day before he made the statement, I will not allow a Benghazi to take place. He was clearly referring to the attack on the U.S. Embassy in Libya uh, in 2012, in which the American ambassador had been killed. And he, throughout the election campaign, had blamed Hillary for this, Hillary Clinton for this event. Yeah. So he was very clear. So I think this may have been a factor. Linked with this are the other considerations. He's facing impeachment. <laughs> He is facing impeachment. Now, there is no indication that he is going to be formally impeached and finally uh, have to leave the presidency. That is not likely. He has majority support in the Senate. But he wants to preserve his image. His image is of a can-do president, a tough guy president who stands up for the Americans, who stands up for U.S. interests, stands up for the American embassy, etc. So, it has, so he, there is that concern about his personal image in the context of the impeachment. And obviously, he is going to face elections in a few months. We are going to be in the election season within a couple of months. And he has to be fighting for his re-election. Re Given the background that he has of a maverick, of uh, of someone who has had different positions at different times and frankly very little real achievement yeah. i think he could not have taken the risk of something going disastrously wrong in baghdad i think that is why and also do recall here that kaiser Soleimani is a larger than life character he is a person who has come to personify iran's outreach in the region and as you know, this outreach is viewed in Washington, D.C. as the outreach in support of terrorism, extremism, instability in the region. So, the, Iran is already an enemy figure, but that enemy figure is very sharply personified by Qasem Soleimani. So, he makes for a very attractive target in that regard. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that after this, Iran will retaliate? Could there be a war? Is that what we're heading towards? See, up to now, both the United States and Iran have managed their confrontation in such a way that they have not allowed it to get out of hand on both sides. There was the low-level tanker warfare yeah. in June. There was the downing of the American drone in June as well, where Donald Trump said that uh, he refrained from the attack with just 10 minutes to go. Yeah. So, because of the fear of a regional uh, conflagration. In the case of Iran as well, while they have been very long on rhetoric, they have restrained from doing anything that would truly upset the Americans and lead to a major war. Neither wants war and both sides have said they are not interested in war. But there is a concern. I believe that the Iranians and possibly uh, Kaiser Soleimani himself suffered a degree of hubris, mm. of arrogance. Possibly because of the successes he has enjoyed uh, in Syria mm. and in Iraq for so long. Did he come to believe that he is invincible? Mm. How can you explain the blockade of the US Embassy when you know that the US President is facing impeachment? Yeah. How could you countenance that? And after having done this, and having experienced a couple of days earlier a massive U.S. assault on pro-Iranian pro militia in which 25 were killed, how could he presume to go through Baghdad towards the airport in a large cavalcade? It, was he begging for martyrdom? Mm. It makes no sense to me. And my only explanation at this point is that there must have been an extraordinary sense of arrogance and hubris, a sense that I am invincible. And I'm sure, I'm, you know, I regret to note, no human being is invincible uh, at all. So what do you expect will happen now? Now this is, as I said, they have avoided escalating the confrontation up to now. Is the Qasem Soleimani assassination a game changer? And if so, how far will the two antagonists let the conflict uh, continue? This is a very worrying development because, as you know, major conflicts are not planned. The, the events spin out of the control yeah. of the principal powers, of the principal players. Would, could this happen? My sense at this point is that neither the United States 
nor Iran, nor Saudi Arabia, nor the UAE, and certainly not the Iraqis themselves, mm. want to have a region-wide conflict. There are many reasons for this. Number one, what will the conflict lead to? Mm. You will have a lot of destruction. But will you have a resolution? We've had a nine-year-old conflict in Syria yeah. and a five-year-old conflict in Yemen. Several thousand people are dead and all the major cities destroyed and yet there is a stalemate. I cannot imagine what people talk about a short, sharp attack. It doesn't happen. But the moment you do that, there will be retaliation. And the retaliation may not be on American assets. Mm -hmm. What about the Gulf? Yeah. What about the rest of the Gulf? I'm sure that the, Ameri that the Iranians have a certain military strategy that involves a massive assault upon uh, the various Gulf facilities across the waters of the Gulf. And then, of course, you have other role players in the region. You have Turkey and you have Israel. We do not know what exactly they will do. My sense at this stage is that given the fact that no one wants these, this matter to escalate, my sense at this moment is that Russia is likely to play a very sensible role, a restraining role. It is likely to convey both to Iran and to the United States that enough is enough. Let's get our heads together and let us see how we can bring some degree of stability to the region. I personally see this as a golden opportunity, not seized earlier by anybody, but a golden opportunity now for the various major powers to show statesmanship. This word has been entirely missing from the West Asian experience mm. for several years. Mm. But I think this is a golden opportunity. Otherwise, we are looking at massive destruction of the kind that we have seen earlier in Iraq, uh, and in Iran, during the Iran-Iraq war. And I'm not sure a single person in the entire region from, and we have seen this in Afghanistan yeah, and in yeah, Libya yeah. as well. I don't think a single person in the region from Afghanistan up to the Mediterranean wants to see such a devastating conflict. On that note, Ambassador Talmiz, thank you very much.